Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range. Now, a little more than a year ago, and this is how much filming backlog we have, luckily, uh, we did a mad minute with this. Yep, very, very battle-worn, patched up, completely mismatched, but still functional uh, M16 Bertier carbine. With uh, five rounds of 8mm Lebel in, uh, in a Mannlicher type en bloc clip. Yep. Um, so why don't we just let our previous selves take you through uh, what went on on the range. Okay, next up in the French collection, a little uh, M16, 18, 1916, um, Bertier carbine. So it's got the five shot extension and a little spring clap there to close up the mag so this should be open and then the next one will push through they don't fall through they get pushed through and uh, five shot clips again with the same recuperated uh, balde uh, the stamps on there they date from 1914 18 that kind of thing so let's see how this little short handy thing works it's got big enormous fat front sight. Nice change from the lapel. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Let's see how that goes. Now I'm going to put 10 through and uh, in order to leave the bloke with enough to uh, really see what it's capable of. Down. New clip. Huh? New clip. Yeah. No, there's still one in there. Whoa. Uh, aside from the back up. Yeah. That stoppage was weird at the beginning. For some reason it was like this. And it's just not catching the clips riding up. Let's just segregate that clip for the minute. Yeah, so that's a right, weird one. It, the clips are releasing. Yeah. And, uh, and, and then stuck. the clip's blocking the bolt. Yep. Hmm. So. Bizarre. So hope that doesn't happen on yours. Oh, yeah. Well, it was a little uh, more Alice Uber Dead Platz, but you're making nice fireballs. Oh, of course. That's a good thing about these. Well known for that. Theory is that um, it meant it meant the men felt good. You know, and they had a big bang, big fireball, grrr. It doesn't matter what happens at the other end, really. Right. I'm going to start loaded. I've got 20 rounds. I will be amazed if I get through them. I'm going to try my hardest.
Well, that had rather more effect on target than I expected. Those sights are horrible. I mean, you pick them up quickly and uh, for a fast aim, actually. <laughs> given, given that that was far more effect on target than I, than I expected, I possibly have to give the sights a little bit of credit. The Lebel ones, I just basically couldn't see. Hardly. I was like, where is that thing? Um, that, however, is an extremely nice, pleasant little thing to carry and an extremely horrible thing to shoot. Um, it's loud, it's um, it recoils badly. Uh, no, it doesn't. Wendy. <laughs> right. Uh, 265, 307, 261, 337, reload 984, 296, 447, that was something a bit funny, 321, 321, reload of 1094, 279, 296, 258, 268, and that was it, 15, 15 rounds. Um, You'd have probably reloaded faster if you'd kept the trap door open. Yeah, but that's not really a practical proposition in uh, in uh, in, a, in a real life situation. I want to do this as, as sort of close to real life as possible. It's the problem if you keep the trap door open like that, you've got that that is just going to get in the way. It's going to get bent. You it's you're going to get dirt in there. It's not intended to be left open like that. Um, so pushing through, yeah, it'd have been quicker if I'd left that open. But then I've got this great big kind of sharp, easily damageable thing on the bottom of the rifle. Um, and yeah, I mean... The bolt is so much better than a Nobel. Oh, it's so much better than a Nobel. But it's so much worse than practically anything else. <laughs> let's be, let's oh, yes. be honest here. Um, any other turned down bolt, let's, let's, let's be a bit more realistic about this. Um, if you gave me one of these or a sticky out bolt Mauser 98, I might have to think twice about it. I don't know. I might in the end come down to the Mauser 98 actually, even if I have to go to cycle it. Um, but yeah, a, uh, a, mere, a mere 15 rounds. That's uh, the slowest rifle yet that we've done a full minute on. There you go. So uh, anything to add with a year's worth of hindsight there? Um, no, <laughs> it's still terrible. Um, <laughs> obviously, a lot of the trouble I had, you were, think, were far luckier than me, uh, trouble with the, the clips. Um, obviously, they're supposed to be used once and they've been used, who knows uh, how long, how many times until they've reached me. I've ragged them and you can try with pliers to, to return it back to profile, but ultimately... Um, yeah, that was a, a big factor. Um, I don't have an issue with the sights. You do. Mm -hmm. As you said in the video, I don't have an issue with the recoil. He does. And you were fatter then. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I was. It was. I would suffer even more now. But I mean, uh, the, the point about the clips is that in practice, the ammunition was issued in them. Uh, you'd have bro broken open the uh, the boxes, put the clips in your pouches, and used them once and throw throw them away. So we have agreed to disagree about the uh, the magazine hatch there, because I mean you discovered it afterwards in a manual. Yeah. What did it say? It said that if um, it was a manual for general Berthier carbines of all models, and it said if you have an M16 modified one, you should be shooting with the hatch open. Um, Obviously, if you've got this slung on your back and you're suddenly called into action, you're not going to ask them to lightly halt and then open your hatch. You're just going to get on with it. And it'll function, um, as you said, it'll push through anyway. So it's not the issue. But the, other, the question was, fundamentally, does it change anything whether this is open or not when you're speed shooting? I think it did. Um, my reloads were uh, 984 and 1094, average of... Uh, 10.4 seconds, and a good bit of that was pushing the things through. Mm, I, mean, it, I mean, this one particularly is, is quite stiff. It's, uh, but it needs to be, otherwise what's the point if it's just going to flap Flop about open. loosely? Yeah. Um, my, my problem with it is rather more practical. Let's just say you've got into a contact and, uh, and you have opened it according to the manual. Mm. You're running, 
you've got your equipment there, you've got other things like computers <laughs> that it could break on, undergrowth. I mean, that is... Oh yeah, it's going to catch on your it's webbing and catch on all sorts. Yeah. everything and anything, catch on your hand. Uh, they must have been bent and broken with great frequency. But then again, you don't, unless they were all miraculously repaired, you don't, it's not something you tend to see. Well, possibly they didn't open them. Possibly, possibly, <laughs> possibly they and, just and took the manual. And the also, I think, I think, and this is something that the more, the more I've been doing this channel and the research for this channel, the more I think that we overestimate how often people shot their rifles. Yeah. Um, I mean, particularly in a, in a more Second World War context. In a First World War context, if you are sustaining a a, uh, an assault, an assault up the front yeah. when, you, when, you, when you're defending then, then yes I can imagine that people well, and, and it's in reports from, from, from British troops of, uh, mm. of troops firing so, some of them even well over the, over the 15 round uh, doctrinal rapid rate of fire yeah. but I don't know whether the French had a, had a similar deal does it turn up in, uh, in anecdotes I haven't investigated it to be honest but um, um, and then by the Second World War, uh, the British standard ammo loadout for the rifle was 50 rounds, the Germans was 60. Mm. Um, and I think we just overestimate how much people were giving it loads and how often they would have to have to reload yeah. under time pressure. Obviously, if you have to reload under time pressure because uh, something's gone horribly wrong, then yeah. You can just shove it in, you should stuff it. Yeah. <laughs> ah! <laughs> the one thing that just occurred to me, um, since we're talking about World War One, was, and this applies sort of to all the Manica systems, is that if you're resting on a sandbag trench, you've got to leave this bit open. You can't rest it on the sandbag here and try and reload. Yeah. Because well, you something you So you, yeah, I mean, you'd have to duck down, or you'd have to put the sandbag. You have to be a bit further behind. Well, they were quite they were quite big in the British manuals about people ducking down from the firing position mm. I mean, I uh, would. to reload. Yeah. <laughs> why, why expose yourself at a time when you don't need to? Yeah. But I mean, I, I think that this one's been very interesting in various ways because it's by far the worst turned down mm. bolt uh, we've done up to now. Um, and you know, the accuracy was it was adequate. Adequate. Then again, in some later video, um, I do a training exercise with this, and it actually did surprisingly well. Yeah. So yeah. Little right. Easter egg there for you. So uh, <laughs> keep. <laughs> keep uh, watching the channel for that so <laughs> thank you all very much for watching uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't already done so please consider supporting us on patreon and whatever other platforms we have diversified onto when this becomes uh, becomes viable don't know when this video is going to be going out we might already be there if we are they'll be uh, linked in the description below as usual and uh, see you again sometime bye bye <laughs>